Hi everyone, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. Welcome to another one of our lessons. If you are a subscriber, if you are not, welcome to our channel. And hopefully you do subscribe by the end or during the video, or maybe now would be a nice time. Uh, also, do consider hitting that uh, bell for regular notifications because we release quite a few videos regularly. So I don't want you to miss anything. So in this lesson, it's a very very simple statement which I'm making. I'm going to take a note G and we are going to figure out all the chords which go with G. And similarly, we'll have a chart ready for you on our Patreon where you can map this out in a proper sequential way and do it for pretty much all the chords or all the roots rather. So what we are trying to discuss today is there are 12 roots in music, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Then the sharps of flat, C sharp, also known as D flat, E flat, also known as D sharp, F sharp, also known as G flat, G sharp, A flat, A sharp, B flat. So you have 12 roots. So the, the argument here is if there's a melody going on or if there's a landing note or an important note in a song, which is G, we are going to take G for this video. What chords can be what chords will go really well with it and uh, the truth is there are a lot of them and what I'm also going to show you in this lesson apart from the standard pop chords we are going to go pop chords then we are going to do all triads and then we are going to do all roots so in other words you could have a chord which starts on the note A flat which still has a G in it you could start with an F which also has a G in it. It's just that the chord is going to now start being more and more sophisticated. So I will guide you on that front. Basically, every single root on the piano will have a chord which has G in it. But let's go step by step in the lesson. I'd like to do it in three steps. First is diatonically from within a major scale. Then we'll do all the triad options which go with the G. And finally, we'll go crazy. So do stay tuned till the very end and let's get cracking. So G. If you have to find a major chord or a minor chord, first of all, which works with it, in a scale, you have to first ask yourself the question, what is the scale? What is the major scale I'm going to play on? So let's consider this note G to be part of which major scale? It, it can be part of so many, right? Now the truth is, G could be the first note of something. It could be the second note of something. It could be the third note of something, the fourth note, the fifth note, the sixth note and the seventh note, right? It could be either of those. So in other words, there are seven scales, seven major scales, which have this particular note G in them. So let's start with G major. So in the G major scale, you'll find that there are three chords. Actually, in all the major scales, there will be three chords. First of all, a scale which has the note G in it. In all of them, there will be three triads, major, minor or diminished, which have the note G in them. So if you take the scale G major, play the note G, you have the G major chord. As you can see, it has a G in there. What other chord in the G major scale has a G? We have E minor which also seems to have a G and then you have a C major which also has a G in it. So like I said, there are always three chords which will be there in that scale which have the, the target note, the note of your need of the R. That will be the G. So what's another scale uh, which has G in it? Maybe E flat. E flat has G at the third degree, isn't it? E flat F G. So G has another role in the key of E flat major. So what are the chords which have G in them? In the E flat major scale. Again, remember the clue is or the trick is there are three. So first off, you have E flat major, which has the G. Then you have the G minor, which has the G still. And then what else will have the G? You have the C minor, which also has a G. So E flat major, G minor. 
minor C minor this itself is a nice piano practice right here keep your G at the very top and an angle it so that all of the chords are inverted so that the G keeps getting represented E flat with a G on top C minor with a G on top G minor with a G on top E flat with a G C minor with a G G minor with a G trying to make it as obvious as possible i hope you followed so it becomes like a side tracked in in chord inversion exercise also on its own in this lesson fine let's do one more scale where g is there and we won't have i don't want to spend the time with all the seven scales you'll find all of the 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 answers in the notes i've handwritten it there's a pdf copy waiting for you check it out on patreon and it'll be great if you can support us on the channel so let's pick another scale our friend c major not my friend maybe your friend but anyway so g happens to be the fifth of the c major scale so it's good to know all your available chords of the scale c major d minor e minor f major g major a minor b diminished c major so again which chords have g in them c major g major and then e minor there we have it c g e minor so g is there in well seven scales and there will be three chords which have the g in them so you may also find a few diminished chords in them which have the g in them like c sharp diminished e diminished and g diminished which are symmetric in nature they are just inversions so you may find some of the diminished uh, triads major and minor so that is the diatonic realm where your in a major scale there's someone whacking the note g or someone singing or howling the note g and you need to find a chord and survive and play and also make them enjoy it and feel something so you have the choices you have three in every scale and some of them are major some of them are minor so depending on your requirement you can use them right so moving forward i'd like to expand this concept chromatically so we are now trying to argue which are the major and the minor chords in life which have the note g in them so it's quite easy to figure this out it will be g major e minor c major a good way to understand this is there will be three major chords and three minor chords so which are the major chords which have g in them g major c major e flat major again to prove you i'm playing g at the top end of each of these chords g major c major e flat major g major these are the three major chords which have g in them what about the minor chords again there will be three g minor c minor e minor e minor okay g minor c minor e minor is there a way we can remember this yes of course there is intervals first off what is the namesake chords what are the namesake chords major and minor of the same name so g major g minor so someone asks you which are the chords which have g in them obviously g major g minor the other thing you can argue is which chord root has g as its fifth c c d e f g c g sa pa so c major c minor so g exists as the one chord g major g minor g exists as the five as the fifth of the c c major c minor and g exists inside a chord where whose root is a major third so now you have to remember your intervals g is the major third of e flat major e flat f g g is the major third of e flat major chord because a major chord has a major third and then g is the minor third of which minor chord e minor there we go so g is the minor third of e minor 
G is the major third of E flat major. G is the namesake or the root of G major, G minor. G is the fifth or the perfect fifth of C major, C minor. There we have it. We have six triads which have G in them. And that's a great start. You can make music on G. And feel free to wander your melody as long as you give some emphasis to the note G. So you could play G a little longer. Then play some other notes linearly, I guess. And land back on the G with a new chord. C minor. E flat. You can take songs like Clearly Adele decided to use that concept in the song. So uh, that's how you can use chromatic triads to, uh, to embellish G. And uh, one might think that we are done, but we are not done. Uh, we have one more quick thing to finish off. So... Here's the argument. The third way of using G or harmonizing G, if you want to call it that, would be anything goes. So any chord goes. So we have covered a few things already. So if you take the namesake chords, the G major is there, the G minor is there. But then you can even expand it. You can be like G major 7th, G minor major 7th, uh, G minor 7th. G dominant 7. So you can do those extensions as well. But it's still like a G chord. The same story with a C. With a C minor. You can do C minor. C minor 7th which still has a G. C minor 7th flat 5 clearly has a G. C major 7th has a G. C dominant 7th has a G. So many chords have G. And so on. Now G is the major 3rd of the E flat chord. It could also be the major third of the E flat major seventh, E flat dominant seventh. So the position of G is still the major third. So it'll work for even the extended versions of those chords. Same thing E minor seventh, E minor extended, E minor seventh, E minor ninth still has a G and so on and so forth, you, you know. So... We, let's now move a bit forward. So you can just argue, okay, I've covered the root. Um, I've covered the the fifth. G is the fifth. I've covered the major third. I've covered the minor third. There are more intervals, right? So we argue now. I would like to argue from the way down. So what's the interval which is below the octave or below the root? The major seventh. So we ask ourselves, G is the major seventh of who? The answer is... A flat. So you could do an A flat root. You can hold it like this. And build G as an upper extension, creating a major seventh vibe. You could even do a A flat minor major seventh. I love that chord. So G is the major seventh of A flat major seventh and the A flat minor 7th which is rather rare similarly A flat major 9th and the extensions of the major 7th which are 9s and 11s and so on ok so major 7th done and dusted then we argue G is the minor 7th of what G is the minor 7th of what again G is the minor 7th of our A so you immediately have an A dominant 7th you have an A minor 7th. It still has that G as the minor 7th. And you can even consider A. A minor 7th flat 5. Which has our G on the top. So A uh, dominant 7th. 
flat 7, A minor 7, flat 7, and then A minor 7, flat 5, which has the G. There we go. So major 7th over, minor 7th over. Now we come to the 6th. G happens to be the 6th of who? Okay. So G, sometimes this is tricky. So it's good to see the keyboard or visualize in your mind. That may also help. The answer would be B flat. So you could either thicken a major chord like B flat major with the thickening of the G. But I really like the B flat minor with a G which is also called as a minor 6th chord. Beautiful sound. B flat minor with a G. You could also look at this chord which is a diminished 7th chord. But it's important to know or interesting to know that all diminished 7th chords are inversions of each other. So you have B flat diminished 7th which has a G in it. What is a diminished 7th chord again? It's just stacks of minor thirds. So you can do B flat diminished 7th. You can do C sharp diminished 7th. You can do E diminished 7th. You could do G diminished 7 because they all have a G in them. Okay, so diminished 7th chords will be 4 in number which have G in them. And uh, the other stuff which I wanted to talk about just to revise was B flat major 6th because B flat 6th is G, major 6th interval. Major 6th is also called as diminished 7th for your information. That's how the diminished 7th got formed. And then the minor 6th. Minor with a major 6th. We call it a minor 6th chord. Okay, so G is now the minor 6th. We, we finished major 6th. So G will be the minor 6th, which is also known as the augmented 5th, depending on the function. So G will be the minor 6th of who? We need to see. I tend to first look at it as the augmented 5 or the sharp 5 of something. And uh, that will be easier and more common. We find that the answer is B. B to the G. So if you take B augmented, works like a charm. So B augmented clearly has G. We call that an augmented fifth, not a flat six as some of us might get mistaken with. So B major will be B D sharp F sharp. When you add the uh, uh, go plus one from the five, you get the augmented chord. So B augmented has a G in it. Another nice chord I like from the B is you take a major 7th from B and then augment it. So it will be like an augmented major 7th. Very interesting. You could even do like a flat 7 there. Augmented 7th as we call it. Another nice way to do it is like this whole X-Files version or like any kind of uh, alien movies. You take a minor chord and now add the G. There you go. You just do that and it just feels like aliens are about to invade us. So that's where you use it as a flat 6 or a minor 6. So the G as a minor 6th or an augmented 5th of the B. So we've come down now. We've done octave, which is obvious, same as root. Major 7th over, minor 7th over. Major 6th, also known as diminished 7th over. Then minor 6th, also known as augmented 5th over. Now we come down to a perfect 5th, which is over. I told you that earlier. C's 5th is G, C minor, C major. Then we come down to the tritone. So G will be the tritone of what? You may immediately argue some diminished chord out there. Right? So you could take like a C sharp diminished. But remember, all diminished are inversions of each other. So... You, you get C sharp diminished, seven, diminished or even a diminished 7th E 
Okay, so diminished chords and augmented chords are inversions of each other. So G is the tritone of C sharp. But another interesting thing I like to try is to play C sharp major seventh or the tritone major seventh and drop the five down by a step. You get this beautiful voicing, a beautiful chord. It's a major seventh flat five chord. At least that's what I call it by. Very beautiful chord, very thematic. So major seven down one again. G is represented as the flat five of something. So G is the flat five of the C sharp chord, or you can even look at it. Look at uh, flat five as being a sharp four, which gives you a very Lydian vibe. You could even call this a sharp four. Anyway, so what happened after that? Now we come down. G is the perfect fourth of what? The argument is G is the four of something. So the answer will be D. And a great chord which works is the sus four. You could take a sus four. You could even take a G sus two. Invert it. What I really also like to do is do a seven sus four. So you could do a D sus four with a seven flat. So G is very much the perfect fourth of our note D as a suspension sus four or seven sus four, depending whether you want to do three notes or four notes. So we finish sus. Uh, we finish perfect four. Major third is over, right? G is the major third of E flat. I talked about that earlier. G is the minor third of E minor. I've talked about that earlier. So that leaves us with two more intervals. G is the major second of what? It's really easy to see. You will find that G is the major second of F. So you would consider like an F sus two. You could consider an F. Add to which is an F major with a with that G stacked in. You could also consider an F minor add to or an add nine, where G is just a passing note. Another thing you could do is when you do the jazz tensions like nine, eleven, and thirteen, you could say G is the nine of an F. By playing an F dominant and then stacking up G at the top end, so G is the dominant. Uh, sorry, G is the ninth or the major ninth of F. F dominant seventh. There we go. So I like looking at G as the second or the ninth, depending on the function. Okay, but F, F add two or F ninth and. So on and so forth. You even have minor ninths that could work. Dominant ninths and major ninths. So so many kinds of ninths. Okay. Last but not least, G is the flat two, or sometimes we call it flat nine of what? Well, you can immediately look here. You'll have an F sharp. You may not want to play just F sharp and G, even though it's quite cool, very horror movie like, or Psycho or something. Anyway, so one nice strategy is if G is used as the minor two of something. In this case, F sharp. You could build some very interesting chords like. This is a Phrygian chord, which is one, two flat, four natural or perfect four, and then the perfect five. It's a Phrygian chord because it brings out the Phrygian. Na 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 na. It's a modal chord, you could say. Another nice way I like to use G as a flat two is add it beyond. A dominant seventh, and we call it a flat nine. There, there 
there we have it so this hopefully proves uh, beyond reasonable doubt that g exists with every single root in music it can be there with f sharp it can be there with g it can be there with b flat all the 12 notes in music and then you have different variations as well so wow that was a lot i i hope I hope you have digested it and thank you for watching it till the very end but to digest this even better it may be advisable to grab our patreon notes where because this is a theory lesson there's a lot which I have written down so uh, do consider grabbing uh, a copy of it and uh, by being a patreon member you also get the previous lessons and there's notation there's backing tracks and so on uh, you could also consider joining us for our intermediate or advanced lessons you could go to our website fill up a form drop us a whatsapp or an email and one of us will reach out to you um, and so on and so forth there's a lot of things you can learn from nathaniel school of music uh, of course starting with this youtube channel thanks again for watching the video and uh, don't forget to give the video a like a share if possible leave us a comment and uh, hit the sub button subscribe button and the bell it'll be awesome Cheers, catch you in the next one.